These were some of the best highlights from the Rumble stage of LPL Summer 2024 matchup between IG and EDG. For the bat to start the 2v2. Yeah, and uh, top lane as well, likely to be winning because you have that Renekton. Oh. Sheila first is down a box. Oh, oh, this no, is not the play you wanted, folks. He arrives. It's a complete disaster. We've only just begun. Leave has cleansed. But, I mean, there's no CC coming through. It's just pure damage on the side of IG. Wink surely will fall. Aftershock keeps him alive for a moment, but the red buff, no. The W dot from Vampire, I think, <laughs> was enough to finish it. Mate. The fact that we've suddenly got AD carries everywhere, it's gone a little bit too much at this point. I like, I, I don't quite understand what. I mean, we could even have more than that. So you can have them in jungle with Graves and Kindred. Uh, you can have them multiple in mid lane. Of course, you got the bot lane. Oh, so you can see top lane now. now. I don't think he really falls into the marksman category. Bring, bring at back, this point. bring back old, bring back what is it? The, the old Mafia Graves. That one. That's the auto yeah. That's the one. Here we go. Stun CC chain. Big burn damage, but that is a Cassante. He's pretty tanky at this point in the game, and will. Walk away with his life. Big move up to that top side from EDG as they took the three groups for themselves. And IG got that first strike. But GJ needs to grab a blue buff on top, but GLFS looking to answer on the opposite side. Yes, uh, West Cam does have that ultimate, which is uh, very, very helpful for surviving dives. And then we've got your W as well. At least be careful here. The wave will get start to be stacked up. This is the bonus of having your Renekton. and it just gives you this early wave control when you need it. JJ could potentially flash forwards. Oh, yes. And that's the W down. So Wise Cam will burn to a cinder. And that will be EDG grabbing their first kill of the game. Leave. That is a dangerous place to be, my friend, as he's. Taking a good chunk here. All available for GLFS. So is Clans though, what? but it doesn't matter because Vampire just flashes to finish the job. Um, the grubs, and now you're going to have six grubs. It is grub again. We have, we've, we've got swarm mode. We brought it in. We've got swarm mode here, right in the LPL. You heard it here first. First professional game of that one. And they're going to use that very quickly to go towards top tower, but not before the satchel probably kills bot tower. Yeah, can they beat the six? Absolutely not. Nobody can beat the six is the answer to that question. She takes minion aggro, to, she takes tower aggro. So just delayed it a little bit. It's not going to be the most important thing. I just like it. Well, I like calling up a small uh, understanding of this. Um, he's not necessarily known for his Cassante in the way that his duelists are. I think even though he's 1k down, I'm looking forward to seeing his teamfight impact. Uh, last time he was on this pick, I remember him having some huge um, team fights on the champion. Alpha back towards mid lane. Six grubs means that what about a third to uh, a half of this area is already going to be gone. Uh, yeah, just around about that, that third of that HP. Six grubs really is a win condition. Uh, giving that over is very powerful now. IG, they do not want to get this Herald over. Topside objective battle. EDG managed to get it. That's a huge death charge and a bomb on top of it as Wisecam dives into the action for more. Now the flank from Solo Kill. His opportunity to shine for the side of EDG. He's 1v3 right now and he'll take down Vampire. That's a shutdown on the Nautilus, but Solo Kill dies for it too. So what does that end up being? Two for one overall. Herald does go down. Uh, Herald doesn't end up going to the side of EDG means that despite the fact that they have six grub, breaking that mid lane out of turret is going to be very, very hard. If they had that Herald, they'd be able to pressure that. Even just an extra auto attack or two more could have been enough. Jedrick caught out. Dude, he's just caught recalling. I mean, that's just unfortunate. As the, the stalwart veteran, the guy that's leading the charge that we always talk about, of respite. But in 90 seconds, Ocean Drake's going to come back onto the map. Recall for my scan. Sticks around. I don't know if he should have. He's made a terrible mistake. 1v1 with Crime potentially. Teammates are on their way. Crime flashes from the stun. And suddenly, YSKM alone should have finished the recall, my friend. Oh dear. So, EDG, they do send three towards uh, the bot side. The EDG not going to start the Drake on spawn, and it means IG can contest this wave. They can get priority for themselves. And now they're the ones moving into River instead. Yeah, Vampire does have the depth charge, does have that hook. Maybe trying to get a chunk out of leave, but he does manage to get a bit. Try to see how big that Ziggs ultimate is, how big that Lilia is as well. With the flash Lilia Q available, that can be so, so powerful. Solar Kill's trying to get a flank, but his team's already in the fight. That's a huge kill onto Wink. Leave dives forward to try and start more. Solo Kill moving forward. GLFS forced to flash away, gets a double sleep. Bomb available for Arn, just goes for the front line. Solo Kill jumped. Leave now caught. Has to flash back away from YSKM. EDG trying their damnedest, but falling short. 
them if they do get themselves a dragon as well, which is very likely to. They're also going to have soul point, which means they have more late game macro options. GLFS gone out of dodge, so six to four, three drakes. Gold just about even as EDG get an opportunity to take a tower, but it will be trading in the top side, so gold will remain even. Just feel IG favored right now. And I just want to quickly mention, I think we should celebrate it while we can. IG quietly having a really nice game on this Nautilus. A vampire, sorry, not yeah. IG. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think he's been uh, playing out the team quite well. The laning phase in the early game was very good to choose. Whilst he's going to land on the Jid, I don't think that's going to lead to anything. I was wondering if we'd just uh, pull that ultimate if Arn was in range, not to be the case. Solar Kill pops his ult to wave play through here. Uh, Lee was rotated down towards that bot side to get themselves some more of that gold, but it does mean that he's not here to wave play through mid lane, which means Arn is going to take this mid lane turret. You know, IG, they're not a team which I particularly praised the macro off before. They're a team which typically uh, look towards the big fights, but they really are getting themselves good tower gameplay. I think that particularly Arn with his wave play, delaying EDG from using those six grubs and just holding the bot lane turret for so long, holding the mid lane turret for even longer. So look for the skill shots like those bombs and the swell seeds. They can actually lead to a big fight in themselves if they hit the right targets. Those swell seeds have been very, very good from GLFS so far. He's going to go on a bit of a uh, vision removal plan there. Doesn't manage to do any of that on the two different wards around the flank. Solo kill. He needs to have himself a huge team fight as well. Big combo up on the oh. table. Here comes Wink. Wink goes in but finds nothing and Vampire flips it around. Horsey down. Solo kill into four. Good damage on GLFS but that's all he'll get. Bomb on his head and he's exploded into a million pieces. And YSKM says this is a flank. JJ barely gets out with his life as Leave is sent packing help. Buzz a low IG. Maybe a miracle can come on through. Leave trying to carry the fight here. The bombs, the swirl seeds flying in his direction. He survives. And up against things like a brand, things like a Zeri, that's fantastic to not be full committing, to not be grouping up. Yeah. And I will say, I think this is one of Vampire's best games from recent memory. Really good performance on this Nautilus up against his old team. I feel like Vampire today is incensed. He wants this win so incredibly badly. This one's not really about the LPL. This one's personal. This one is about him versus EDG. Win the replacement wants to make it happen, but Vampire dives into the back line, gets on to Lee. But in the meantime, Solo Kill on the flank trades one for one. Lee goes down as the top laners both just trade their lives for a kill on the AD carry. It's a two for two, all things said and done, and EDG, that felt like it should have been the big moment. Leave us alive after that point, things change a massive amount. Baron's gonna get started, EDG, can they get here in time? I think so, yes, just about, but Wink isn't there to be the engage. I thought IG would just peel off, but they are sticking around for this one. So I kill already chunked as Wise Game moves over. Remember, Ocean Soul means they can keep this up all day long. The sustain is there, and IG take Baron EDG, try and contest, but never really commit. The mid lane turret, they still haven't taken that one at 30 minutes almost into the game. That's after all, hang on, engage, comes through, onto cry and flashes to safety, but the bomb on top of the burn! What a combo from IG! Not even a flash of the dash can save you now. And with Ocean Soul, they can keep this up. They don't even have to recall from the chunks. Nani gets a tower in the bottom side as well. Leave. Trying to do something to answer. He's looking for a tier two. At least that'll be some gold onto the Zeri, but it'll be in trade for potentially two in him towers here. Getting hit by, I believe that was an unassisted swell seed as well. Chilla fast, great accuracy, but also you have E, you have Flash, you're a mobile AD carry, you have that summoner spell. At this moment, you can't be afford, you can't afford to go down like that. So that's going to be uh, an inhib down. It's likely going to be with the rest of the Baron buffs. Are you face chicken into this team? It's gonna have to be Wink to do it. Solo Kill's gonna try and push out bot side and potentially look for a flank, but the Elder's already started. They're just gonna do, man, this one at EDG. Gonna have to desperately oh, try and force their way in 3k on Elder. It's gonna be smited. And now IG, they've lured EDG in towards them. And now with Elder should be golden. YSKM's in trouble, but Wink and Kryon are in even more. YSKM is gonna go down on the top side, but it just does not matter. Lee nearly flashed into a bomb there. Dives into the backside against Elder. The burn is plenty for Han to finish the job. And my goodness, IG, they've made a mockery of EDG. This has not been close. EDG makes some mistakes in the early game. They give too much gold over towards that Ziggs, and the Ziggs 
demolishes the game alongside the rest of Invictus Gaming. They have turned up to play in what feels like a bit of a personal matchup for a lot of these teams. Bit of a grudge match here. Solo kill trying his best in these fights to get backside, but ultimately, it's all IG. Very different style of composition from EDG. This time it's much easier for them to force fights. They have a better amount of play from range as well. They have Ezreal cues. And they have themselves a lot of team fighting wombo combo potential as well. by EDG, kind of just throwing a couple of mistakes yeah. towards this, this bot. I assume that was Clear Love's advice after the previous game was just, just don't fight early. Do you know that Peaky Blinders clip? Where he's going around there. <laughs> no fighting! No fighting! No fighting! We've got his in, we've got Israel. No fighting! Just wait until later, wait until we got some items. And so far, so good. They get yeah. themselves the first Drake of the game. IG will trade that for the Grub, so opposite way around to the previous game. One of my favorite things about Peaky Blinders, and also Game of Thrones to extend to Elden Ring is probably in this list. I thought he was going to step up there and, and show us that he's still that guy. Um, you know, when Ari was in the meta, I feel like Nani had some really, really fantastic games. He's had a couple of really good Yone games as well, but he does feel a little limited. His leave engaged upon on trying to get that plasma down, flashes forwards. One more auto will do the trick. The minions might finish leave off, but he gets into the brush. And now on is caught. Here comes JJ to save the day. And first blood is taken for EDG. And this is JJ, then saves the day. A slightly better flash from Arn, and that is first blood for IG, I think. Pretty unfortunate from him as, as the player that we often talk about for IG. But EDG will be very happy with JJ getting first blood, a positive first play. And again, that's uh, we talked about the kind of early laning mistakes from EDG in the previous game. It was almost the same again. Twice KM now in a 1v2 and nearly finishes solo kill. The needle work. Can he find the snipe flash from solo kill? As JJ goes in, Twice KM, no ultimate now, but the snip snip does big damage. That's a flash forced, but enough CC. JJ all over the board. He gets himself a kill on both sides of the map. Wirescam has that ignite. He is very, very scary. Leaf gets tagged. He doesn't have a cleanse. This could be an ult, and indeed it is. CC chains coming on through onto Leaf. Back to back plays here. This time it works out. Leaf, even on that Ezreal, not playing safe enough. Ultimate and solo kill as well, having that means that maybe ID just want to stay away from those solo lanes. IG decide that they want to. Forgo the Herald and forego their bot lanes <laughs> simultaneously there. As, uh, they won't contest either objective. It will be uh, Solo Kill forced away as Vampire. I told the idea of they can play if Solo Kill continue to push. JJ moving up to this top side and immediately just slams that Herald down, trying to inject some gold into this Azir on the top side. I mean, Cryon already off to a 400 gold lead with the CS lead he's built for himself. The tower going down as well. This is here. It's starting to get a little bit accelerated. Um, wow. It goes up. Typically does come down. That is sort of how it all works. Newton famously was of that opinion. Uh, oh, that's a deep dive. Oh, my goodness. Chich is so far in for this play. But he's managed to survive and flash back out. That's a three-man sleep for IG. And Arn dives in to make it work. Solo Kill tries to flash on him, but it doesn't work. And here comes the Gwen. It's a good little shuffle from Cryon. And it's an absolute mess of a fight. But IG prove that they've got the hands. Cryon will fall. Forget the hands. It's all about the scissors this time. IG went out through the first big fight of the game. EDG, I thought they'd managed to catch off Nani. I thought they'd managed to take down Vampire as he tried to delay the rest of the team. But somehow, GLFS gets himself a godlike ultimate and manages to completely ruin. Trying to get in the bot side river and contest for the Drake. They've already got two Drakes on themselves. Nani's pushing a tier one on the top side. And they're clearing vision around this Baron. If there's too much of a commitment from EDG on the bot side, it could be something that started, and in fact it will be. And that's a TP to the top side for YSKF. They're just pulling the trigger. We talked about 20-minute Barons. I wasn't serious. I didn't expect it to happen. 6k on the purple worm. As here comes Solo Kill. But Jinj is nowhere to be seen. IG grab a Baron in trade for one Drake. Vampire trying to escape now. The slow's coming up through. The culling on to win. Can IG get away with it? Nani may be sacrificed. But that's four Baron buffs for one single Drake. 
Huge mistake from EDG. Just leave your Azir to kill the dragon at that point. At least he can teleport up and he has good objective damage. The fact that uh, JJ is stuck alone on that bot side means that he can't come in and influence the play. It's another good uh, Baron play for Invictus Gaming. They're playing out their objectives very effectively in this series. They will lose that mid lane turret. They did lose Nani as well. But this is um, a bit of a blunder here from EDG. Their objective play, their their thoughts about how to move across the map have been shown up today. They have not really been on the board and quick enough to these objectives, and now it's left them in a very difficult position where they're going to have to uh, show how much wave player they've got. I don't know if they can really save all these towers. Yeah, this tier one's definitely going down. Crying needs to be a little more efficient with his position there, but knows that he's got Wink on the way. YSKM gets a chance on the bot side as well. Nobody will be here in time, so that will be all three tier ones now conquered for IG. Similar for EDG on the other side, though. We're kind of even in terms of map state, but with that Baron still for another minute and a half, you'd expect IG to want at least a bit more. Yeah, so, um, EDG. Oh, so he wants to. Yeah, Solar Kill. Yeah, they're just falling apart in terms of their map movement. Solar Kill's got ult in five seconds. That is probably too long. Solar Kill is going to go down here. Managed to get a slice and dice while asleep. I don't know how he managed to pull that one <laughs> off, to be honest, but still goes down either way. Games, but unfortunately, that doesn't really feel like it's converted. <laughs> the fact that we've got four, one, and three teams in group Nirvana is something else. TP down to the bottom side. YSKM. Why did he flank here? Has been spotted, I think. I don't know if he actually got spotted or if that's just a, a wary danger pick there. But Drake starts now by IG as leave. True, true shot barrage, maybe just for some vision. Okay, over the wall here. Perhaps a, a chance for a steal onto the Drake. They're just going to go for the 50 50. JJ gets into the pit and gets the dragon. But can EDG survive the fight as well? The needlework going across the team as Arn is sweeping up. EDG, sure you got the Drake but everybody dies! EDG's carries just can't find their positioning. Kryon goes defensive. He can't get the damage which EDG needed. IG around the objectives again to prove they are just better than EDG. Two World Championship organizations who have fallen on hard times meet together today to find which one can punch down on the other one a little bit harder and keep their hopes alive here at Group Nirvana. The real question is, was there any pressure to fight right now with only two drinks previously taken by IG? I'm not so sure. But IG will be happy with two early game fights ending in aces. These were some of the best highlights from the Rumble stage of LPL Summer 2024 matchup between FPX and LGD. Um, kind of name nomenclature and stuff like that because it just makes it sound more fun and I, I don't mind that. Look, we're in a fantasy video game. We get to have ourselves some Ooh. fancy the name sense as well. Hi, Chow. Yeah, it's got Valkyrie. Just holds his nerve. Doesn't move to the swirl. He misses. Gets away with his life, but it means Hai Chow can trade more evenly back towards Ke Ke doing Really well in the early stage of this lane against the Tristana. Letting that Tristana go through, remember? And yet still managing to win out the matchup so far as Milky Ways moved into the bottom lane. This feels a little scary for LG. Really Only three minions, but it's enough minions as life under the tower, though. Good damage from Kepler to return the kill. Yes, it's a one for one. And um, off the rift, kind of you, him and Shire, in any particular favor or not. Meteor now going towards bot side after visiting top side um, just a little earlier. It's going to be going in from the swirl seed lands, but life goes straight onto Jin Zhao. I'm not sure he'll make it back out of that one. The burn on Jin Zhao. Milky Way's got some damage, not from two, but. They can't really chase anyone down. With that bot lane dive really doesn't work out in your favor this time. Milky Way does manage to get himself towards that dragon. He'll be happy to stack that one up nice and early. But because he's down there, he's been there trading very hard. Maybe that opens up an option for Meteor to go towards the grubs on spawn. Like Meteor starting it. Milky Way wants to get in. It reminds me of the croaks all those seconds ago. Oh, such Meteor. a long time I know, ago. Yeah, good memories, man. Like, good times. Uh, Jin Zhao goes forward. He's taking damage from three, but Milky Way's overstepped his bounce here. The bomb explodes. Nine Chow has a reset. Jumps towards life. I wasn't sure if he'd go for care there, but holds his nerve. Doesn't overcommit to things. But that's, what's, uh, that's like what they gave up. Life is still on this top side, but he has no mid lane. Well, he has a mid lane and now. Doesn't have top lane coming just over ZDC. With Ignite, with ult, this could still be a fight, but Vernal's keeping him out of the river. I love that Meteor didn't smite that at 600, but then did smite it at 15 health. 
I'm somewhat surprised. Hang on, that's an arrow. We'll see if that one goes through. It if it hits the Jace, good. that is a it big looks win. It good. Oh, but Birdle dives in just as the arrow comes forward. Now a chance for CDZ, but a flash from Birdle. He dodges everything. So no chance of a dive. I don't think there's much of a chance for Meteor to really get in the jungle either. Dodges away from the damage from Milky Way, and that's a hex flash from Jin Chao, but doesn't commit. In the meantime, Care and Hai Chao just absolutely duking it out in the mid lane. Everything blown as Milky Way gets some damage onto Jin Chao. And it's finally a pick as Kepler now slowed by Dogdom. It's so oh, hard no. to escape from the Ash. You can never escape from the Ash. Flash comes up through. Kepler still slowed. The cleanse isn't enough. And Dogdom just chases him across the map for a solo kill. We just witnessed the bone saw right there, because as soon as Kepler got hit by that first auto attack, he was going nowhere. And then tries to flash, tries to use is his this a reference I, Is this a rare reference? I don't understand. That was, the, uh, that was a reference to the first Spider-Man film with Tobey Maguire. Um, <laughs> it's in the wrestling ring, and we're in the wrestling ring on the top side. It's the true shot barrage from Kepler. Snipes out Milky Way, double, double you as well from Meteor as this is all going the way of LGD. Jin Chao just about surviving his life is pulled back in and finished off. And now ZDZ realizes there's nowhere to run, no flash available. Bopped on down and Hai Chao finishes the job. With great power comes great possibilities for LGD. Close. This has been so problematic for FDX. They are gonna get themselves um, a contest onto these grubs. Potentially they're moving up as a four man strong. Four grubs regardless though for LGD. Honestly, even if they don't get another quite with how that one's gone, especially with a hard commit to that top side from FBX, mid cryo. The Herald has now been started by FBX. They are gonna go towards one of those objectives. LGD, they're not angling for a fight themselves as it currently stands. They're instead pushing in the mid lane. They haven't even looked towards the dragon just yet. I wanna see if they're angling towards a fight. Use this lane priority to get themselves a little bit of vision and then see if they can get into FBX's face. FBX feels like trying to get some control of the map on that top side, but Hai easily able to, I was going to say trade, but actually the tower's still not gone down on that top side, so despite the presence there from Life and from Milky Way, with Jin Zhao moving up, we've still not quite been able to finish the job. Next wave could be the one, though. This care can move on up. Birdall might be able to clear that wave as the dragon taken. And there we go, it will be traded. Herald, remember, still in pocket for Milky Way, so could maybe move mid with that. Birdle backs off from that turret. I think it's, yeah, let's take this time to talk about Birdle. Because Birdle is such an interesting player to me. He did do a good job of kind of going up towards more the front line slash kind of utility kind of picks to be someone who could CC, someone that could tank in the front line. It's interesting to me now, particularly because they changed their style. Gage in the jungle, life might have overstepped his bounds here. Hook goes wide, Jin Chao, the root is enough and life goes down. Pyroclasm across the team and perhaps a chance for FBX as ZDZ blows the Orn Horn. Looks for a knockup, but he's maybe overstepped as the rest of FBX just abandoned ship on the play. The yeah. um, solo flare oh, back into the fight. There's another fight going on, there's two are already gone down. Care now trying to get DPS out, but there's a bomb. Going up both sides is Birdle now gets a shock blast. You'd then try to fill it up as best as possible. I thought we'd have nothing for a bit. We had a really active early game and then nothing for like five minutes beyond that point. I forgive us for thinking the main hater of just turning up to a river and uh, watching an objective get taken. That is one of the worst things you can do in Pro League of Legends. You can be doing better things with your time. You can be cross mapping, as you can see right now, Milky Way can be farming. Um, Epics didn't have to be there to watch that dragon die, and they do end up uh, peeling off after they take that boat. They realize, okay, we can't fight, let's go do something else. Beagle's gonna get himself into the enemy jungle, see if he's still blue. Can't do it, but he can get a sleep onto Milky Way, and while he's dreaming, everything flies in his direction. It's turned into a nightmare for FPX, but CDC has managed to find one for himself, and the Brittle Ultimate Meteor sets up for a Solar Flare execution. Talk about Sunburn, and here comes Care on the bottom side. What a fight for FPX! FPX have a plan A, a plan B, and apparently a plan ZDZ. Not the one. Not the one at all. Life has to tank it. He's got a Warmog, so he'll be back up to full HP and FPX suddenly. With the support down on LGD, maybe with a chance to just start a Baron. There's no Drake on the other side to threaten a trade. LGD now against the Rock in a hard place. 
Ah, oh, that's gonna be Swellseed going wide. If Swellseed hits the next one, it's everything is someone off the vision. Life was on a flank, third ult, ended up spotting it out. Perhaps he's done enough to deny Varen once more, but this time he's caught. This time he goes down to CDC. Gets Kepler out of dodge as well. And FBX can just rinse and repeat. I thought that maybe FBX had chosen the wrong targets. They used the Orn ult to, onto different targets than the Jace. Jace had the phase rush, but it's not enough. Where's this next swell seed going? If this hits, this could be huge. Oh, it held to Milky Way. It held to Milky Way. The sleep on the bang line, but in the meantime, they've already got one. FBX just pulled the trigger, and LGD are blown to smithereens. Meteor trying to move forward to help us. Are pretty low on the side of FBX. Milky Way, one auto away, but the Baron. Luckily for him, picks different targets. I mean, this couldn't be closer. Yeah, that's two swell seeds from Meteor, which save, might have even saved the game at this point. If you end up losing that fight and losing the, another Baron, I think FPX probably just blow open the game. The first Baron got them back to near enough, even the second one would have got them hugely into the advantage. So, those swell seeds from Meteor, um, his three items, those three items did save him, of course, around that Baron. We'll now see uh, whether this objective can really be started up in earnest. Not sole point for either team, so Baron's still going to be the focus right now. Meteor stunned and instantly a TP from Haichao on the top side of the play. Looking for some kind of miracle, looking to jump in live. Has a bomb on his head and moves into the rest of his team. As that will really do that much damage, to be honest. Apex now with a chance for a re-engage. Double knock comes up through Meteor stunned up. But look at the death charge from Jinjiao sends everyone away. It's going to be one kill as Birdall falls. That's a second one, both to Milky Way. But LGD still threatening enough to deny any objective. These fights are so close because the fights aren't won cleanly enough with enough HP bars remaining to take any of the big objectives either side, either side of the map. Both of these teams have been struggling in the Ascension group. This series is important to show that they do belong up here with the top dogs of the LPL. LGD, they lose another couple of kills, but they go straight towards the objective. Meteor burning it down <laughs> and FBX, their jungler's on the blue bar. LG didn't hit, LGD didn't hit no bell. They go again straight onto the Baron. Live trying to deny the escape as the rest of FBX move over. Care is the tank of the Baron, though, so he's kind of chunked as Jinjiao arrives. Hex flash into the play as ZDZ is chunked. Care dodges the hook. It hits the wall instead, and Live walks away with his life as well. Bird all now on the bottom side of the fight. Three man shot blast, but can LGD close the gap? Dogdom is found. The sleep turns it into two as Bird all will burn to a crisp, but maybe to into the mall. High chow flushes for a little bit of a victory lap, and that'll turn into finally a Baron. Finally, LGD get themselves enough kills with enough HP bars remaining to go towards a big objective. They're gonna claim the Baron, and they're gonna get themselves maybe the accelerating play which they need. FPX, they wait. Giving him a really good fight. Milk Way does have flash. You can potentially him for a steal. Pyroclasm is up as well. Pyroclasm is up, but they're all in the pit right now. That's going to be damage, but me, Milky Way goes down. ZDZ finds one, but that's all about. Wait, no! Oh, the Pyroclasm! The, Pyro the, Pyro the Pyroclasm and the Baron on top! The burns what? work it out for FBX! What? Well, we were wrong! LGD didn't get themselves a clean enough fight to get the Baron! You got yourselves a couple of extra item upgrades, which means that you have yourself an extra basically 3,000 stats with the three items upgraded. FBX that is going to put them in, fact, in terms of active gold slightly ahead of LGD. I can't believe FBX have so much frontline, and yet it's Dr. and Milky Way that keep getting chunked by all this poke that's coming out. I mean, this composition from LGD feels so difficult to stay in any contestion with when there's so much damage flying towards you and this is finally going to be a Baron Milky Way. I think he wants to try and move over but he's too late. Realizes it at the last possible second. Now ZDZ pulls the trigger for a fight. Flashes to find the knock of double knock of it back. Is Jinjiao the target? FBX get one as Meteor on the front line now. But Birdo takes care out on the backside. It means life is left alone for Kepler to finish off. Meteor grabs the kill as Hightower looks to threaten once again. Bob on ZDZ's head and he's got some damage as well. ZDZ forced away as Hightower looks for more rockets from FBX. Two teams, but FBX have not been able to put the nails in the coffin when asked. I will say, we're still in touching distance gold-wise and with all items in as well. It really does feel like this one's even. It really does feel like these fights could go either way with a good pyroclasm, with a good Ornal. 
it's still very possible for FPM. Baron Siege in this bottom side. Good lead to hang on, we've got maybe a solo kill bird or forced to flash. On the on the top side of the map as well, true shot barrage is nowhere near. It's nowhere near. It's not gonna hit that one. So you get the targets which you want to. How strong your front line is on the other side too. FBX definitely the stronger front line, but LGD have the bigger range. If they can weave their skill shots around that front line, get onto the back line, I don't think it particularly matters how tanky ZDZ potentially yep. life can be as well. Birdle hits one. Oh, line finds his angle onto Birdle over Solar Flare is down, and Birdle removed from the play, but now the counter punch from LGD as they move in, but they've, they've dropped at ZDZ by so much time and space, it's only a two for one. With Bird on Jin Chao gone and life surviving with Warmogs in pocket, that should be a trade for FBX. FBX have the engage, LGD get have the range. The range doesn't end up surviving for long enough for F uh, so FBX managed to get themselves onto the targets they need. Meteor doesn't have flash, doesn't have ult. How much can he do? Straight onto the backside, Meteor caught here by Life. Great engage there, but a lot of damage taken by Life. Meteor still going strong. Drake secured. LGD, I think oh. they wanted a little bit more, but they just can't close the gap. Make that hero move. Who can have their big moment? I feel like Birdol has had an interesting game, hasn't he? Because he's had a couple of really big moments. He's also been caught out a couple of times, and ultimately ended up one and five, not been able to sweep up many kills, but he is sweeping up towers right now, and Ash Arrow gonna fly across the map, Birdo gets stunned for five seconds, but Merc treads me, oh, no. there you are. wait, the minions finish the turn for the TP, he can come on through, that's TP on cooldown out for Care, ZDC has his, but the rest of LGD are just gonna buy time, that's gonna be an inhib surely, what, he backs away, I mean he doesn't take it? I mean, he's a sad that trying to pull FBX across the map. FBX look for a prey prayer. They look to pray towards that arrow, but all it ends up he's being is a Sims prayer. He's on the Nexus, FBX. You, you can't trade mid lane prior for a Nexus. Oh my days, Birdle finding the value on this. Jay's pick, and that's a sleep. Is True Shot Barrage available? No. Solar Flare comes in into the fight. Stinch out flashes to safety. Life with the bomb on his head, and he's burning. Care next to go down as Life finally falls, and High Chow gets himself some resets. Milky Way falls. Doctum falls. High Chow knocking them all down as Kepler looks to snipe. Birdle escapes to the bottom side, and LGD stamp their mark on this series. Bomb plus Phoenix look for the arrow, they look for the teleport, they find neither and are left wanting. LGD have bled for this win, but it will be theirs all the same. In this matchup with two teams trying to find their place within the Ascension group, LGD strike first. Care will go down to the bomb, ZDZ. Last man standing, but he's not standing any longer. LGD with an absolute banger of a game one. Show that they deserve to be a group of set. FBX, I feel like they have a much easier to execute composition this time. They have a uh, much better repositioning. They have three repositioning at AD carries with the Kindred jumping around the place too. Six yet from uh, the Kaiser, where is, which is when you can get some significant kill threat on the Ezreal. Kaiser always was kind of introduced as a bit of an Ezreal counter in regards to that. We do have ourselves a lot of people entering River in this top side. Oh, Z -Z. He's gonna be okay. I wasn't sure if Birdon would just look for the knockback towards the rest of the team. Great hook from Jin Zhao. And that's that spear setup you were talking about. First blood there for LGD. And potentially Grubs as well. Yeah, that was masterfully stepped by Birdol. Just managed to get himself the right spacing to make sure the ZDZ couldn't get a big turnaround play with his uh, empowered double. He just managed to stick out of auto range, and then of course the rest of the teammates come in from LGD. ZDZ um, has been given this redacted as a first pick. He does not have the redacted pass so far. Maybe it's you've uh, got yourself a um, crocodile skin and boots. That's a flash in the bottom. Kepler, he's got arcade shift, but even that won't save you now. Doctor will grab himself FPX's first kill of the game. Kepler subbing in for Shaya and immediately getting shown the back. When he subbed down of the LPL. Then yeah. rejoined in 2022. Summer was on TT, but again, very lackluster roster. He's been a player that often has been criticized for mispositions in team fights, in map maneuvers as well. He wants to try and prove himself as he stepped into this roster over Xiaoya, a very new player. Perhaps that legacy can step up. 
As Lime goes in for a fight here, Kappa's just getting so much poke damage down. Lamp Dress by used just to keep the support alive. Milky Way Chunk as well. And look at this Max Range CDZ finds the engage though. And Kepler has to blink away, but Doctor finds him on the back line. One for one is now Doctor will be taken down and LGD they keep their distance. It is a trade of dives. There's uh, half of LGD are looking to keep distance, and Bernal manages to get into the back line himself to take down an extra kill. So what's that, a two, two for one overall in a messy fight. This should be a bit of a microcosm of how these fights happen later into the game. You're gonna have someone flashing. Oh, goes a great juggler. It's gonna he's be always gonna be rebbing for that one. That's the case of it. There's not yeah. many times when a player is known for like a negative connotation to a move being named after. Because you know, you've got like the yeah. insect, right? like the flash kick. You've got the Captain Jack, yes it does. You have the blabber, dying for a crab. Yeah. Me and uh, back when Orcs was casting on, hang on, I'm gonna have to hold this thought as life finds himself a double knockup to engage and Milky Way's no damage onto Jinjab. Great spear from Meteor chunks out Milky Way, but it won't be enough to save the LGD support. He drops as Kepler will at least uh, find Tower Dogdom with the all in. No flash for Kepler, oh, remember? Kepler. And he's found in a 1v1 against Dogdom. Kepler uses his E after the W's landed in, uh, in the same way. So FBX giving a lot of freebies there, even though they're behind quite significantly for this timestamp in the game. FBX trading back well, maybe looking for an engage. Oh, Jim Chow just walked straight into them there. He's going to drop again two times in a row there. And I feel like the bottom lane for LGD is falling apart a little bit. The rest of the map looking good, but this bot lane needs to sort their stuff out. ZDZ trying to move in and, and threaten for more, and it will secure the tier one in the mid lane for FBX. It wants a little bit more, but does need to be cautious not to overstep for this one. Good spear from Meteor opens up a potential kill option where, where you know, Nidley very, very good in that early game. Still rolling over that quite well right now, still in 15 years in. Nidley very, very much right. And I think the Meteor's uh, skill shot accuracy on those spears has also been uh, quite impactful. Only two stacks so far on that Kindred, still a long way away from getting the four stacks that we all know and want to see. LGD, despite those few kills going over, it's still 3,000 gold up right now. And TP and Hightown down to this bottom side to try and threaten more, try and guarantee that tier one. All things considered, even with Kepler and Jin Zhao having a couple of awkward deaths, it's still very positive right now for LGD across the board. It is, and um, they need to be careful still. Uh, they have the six grubs, they have themselves a lot of squishy members though, and we've already seen Doc Dam assassinate Kepler. It's not the situation you want to be in, and that's a good damage check from Birdall to say yes, he is very much going to be a problem in that one. We've won already 1.3k up and uh, see whether he can continue that as the Herald is uh, dropped down towards bot side away from us. Six grubs as well, so this should be some good damage and the mites will tank. That's going to be a tower tier two. In favor of LGD and nothing else really gained elsewhere from FPX. FPX. I mean, we said this is a composition that you kind of need to be ahead. You kind of need to be in control of the game for this sort of poke composition, pure damage composition to work. I did learn that there are double U cylinders the other day. Well, not yet. I've been on that for a while. I, did, I just, they're not common, but they're all double cylinders. That's a, oh. a pull from the end. Yeah, his Valkyrie was denied, but Lamb's just gonna die! Oh no! Lamb's respite comes out a little bit late, and Hightown manages to make his way into a Milky Way, dies to the first bomb! Oh god, it's a disaster! And Hightown, the winner of it all with a double kill. Why are they taking that fight when their Kaiser is in base? Doctor was trying to run down the mid lane, trying to get towards that play, but Too once barren. again, they just they just don't get themselves in the position at the right time. And they'll need they're quite a squishy composition. They can't tank this for long, but they can definitely head towards it. Life is heading back out towards the map, but I think this might just be gone. There's no slight right there. Pretty quick. Baron gone. You might have to flash over the back wall. I don't know, Doctor, potentially a chance to pop off here. 2K on the Baron. Smite should come down here, but the health bars are low for LGD. That's Baron. Jin Jam just dips immediately. Kepler over the wall, but Doctor chases for more. Two kills for him, one for Care, but a Baron for LGD. <laughs> Finally, FPX realize, hang on, why, how, why don't we get this Kaiser involved in the game? You wait. I'm not sure quite when. Did manage to find his fourth stack, so the Kindred did yeah. more of a champion in these team fights. Kepler actually dashes forwards to find some damage. Jin Zhao blocks the gulling from Care, and a little shock blast on the back of it as well. Look at the health bars from FPX as they move into the mid lane. Honey fruit there for Kepler as well to remove the poke that's been returned. Kepler right at the front of the fight here potentially needs to back away, but finds one. Never mind, stay exactly where you are, Kepler. Hot off. Doc 
Doctor into the back line, but Birdo flashes away from him. Doctor low on HP, but finds one anyway. ZDZ, one of the last members remaining, and Doctor on the wrong side of the map. Meteor searches for more. Hai Chow gets a chunk from Doctor, who's desperately trying to recall. Another Meteor double knows. Use. Meteor knows, surely. Oh, the spear just meters away as Doctor finally found the solo for Meteor and LGD, kings of the chaos. They have found themselves um, a bit of a roadblock here in LGD. LGD, they were the sore thumb in the Ascension group. People are asking, did they deserve to be here? Flash oh, in on Bernal, that's a kill. Huge pick here for FBX, massive. Unfortunately, there's nothing up right now, but in 20 seconds, Baron will come up onto the map. Birdle has TP, but he'll be dead for another 20 seconds. You have, uh, you've heard for the battle for Middle Earth. Now get ready for the battle for Mid Prior. It's a little bit different. We don't exactly have ourselves any orcs right now, but we have a lot of firepower and so many skill shots from LGD. Even if one misses, there's a dozen other which is going to follow it. If they can land enough poke, that might be it. Milky Way's Milky going! Milky Way goes in and life finds a knock-up to start it off. Jin Zhao alone as LGD forced to retreat to start it off with the health bars alone. And Dr. Dutch to the back line. Look at the Meteor. He survives and instead Dr. Falls. Birdle trying to carry on the bottom side of the fight as LGD stay as a three. Jumping forward to the Lamps respite will keep Kepler alive. The Spears coming in. Shot blast from the side, potentially from Birdle as it goes wide. I shout. Looking for Rockets too, but they're on cooldown. Life sidestep and everything. Three men alive each. There are just so many particles on our screen at every given moment. These skill shots tearing across the battlefield. And it's LGD that vaguely come out with a win question mark. I think definitely after this point, they are going to be able to stick around in the bottom river. Dragon has spawned. FBX, they're trying to get their jungler healed up off of these camps, but can they contest? Milky Way can hop over the back of the pit. He can look for the steel. No lambs respite, though. This is soul. This is soul. And it's soul for LGD as Birdle dives into the back line. No tries to trade it. That's two. How did they find two? Three there. As Hai Chow carries the fight. Life alone in the back of the pit, and he will fall for another in favor of LGD. Incredible burst coming out of Birdle with multi-man to the skies, the hammer form Q, and high chow followed up with boss bombs, Gatling guns galore. LGD have been made to fight for it, but FPX are coming out second best in the grand majority of these team fights. They're almost finding the split fight, so Milky Way and Lockdown to dance their way through the team fight victories, but it hasn't quite been enough. I think particularly in this game, Birdall and Hai Chow have absolutely murdered their way through the grand majority of yeah. these team fights. With the Ocean Soul, we're going to look to take the Baron. Oh, ZDZ tries to make some kind of contest happen, but there's nothing he can do on that one. Now, Doctor. I mean, Killer Instinct is up. If you can find a Void Seeker, maybe there's an angle for an exit kill. Oh, what? What? He killed the Baron! The Void Seeker finds the Void Beast. Dogdom keeps FBX in it. God. W to steal that Baron, that keeps things maybe in contention, but they're still losing their base. He had a Pixel's Whip to hit it, and he hit it, but it will not save the base by the looks of things. Mid lane in hit goes down, bot lane in trouble, and ZDZ falls. This is a window wide open for LGD to find their first series win here in the Ascend group. People said they didn't belong, and they are here to prove everybody wrong. Need to wait for another minion way to finish the job. The CDC not up for another 35 seconds. And with the bloodthirst is here on LGD as well, the poke is meaning less. With that niddly, the poke is meaning less. It's gonna be a siege. And FPX hold on to their walls. I'm looking for a hook, he has that flash, it's gonna hold the breath. And she could be the game ending fight. The hook goes wide. ZDZ has that flash back. He's found Birdle on the side. He doesn't know he's here. He's not going to go onto him just yet. He's going to flank potentially. Mega he's going to get out of the ball. Life finds the engage as Hai Chow gets away. Doctor dies onto the back line. Look at the enemy mid laner. He has to turn golden. ZDZ looks to finish Hai Chow. The health bar low and he will be taken down in the meantime. Care has fallen. This means you found an assassination. But FPX are winning the fight right here. Birdle has to carry. He has to be the one to take the mantle. But with Jin Chow falling, a Meteor can't get into the fight. Birdle surely will die too. FBX are doing it against all odds. FBX find it on the ZDZ's miracle flank. On the other side, Doctor is really starting to take over once the opening has been presented. Picture in picture, we might be seeing a kill. Oh, Meteor's dead. Oh my god, Meteor's dead as Elder Dragon spawns. LGD, two mistakes, two back-to-back -back mistakes, and suddenly this game looks like it's FPX's with Elder Dragon. Surely they can turn that into a Baron as well. Get caught out. He's just looking for a 
play into the enemy jungle, gets hit by the culling. Milky Way jumps over the wall. He just pushed it way too far. Just disrespected the enemy team. You can't be doing that for chickens at this point in the game. He's almost at full build. As Birdall realizes he's in trouble, just TPs to the bottom lane. Does not want to be there anymore. The tower won't quite go down as FBX will claim their Baron. And I've got to say, FBX's team fighting in this late game has been fantastic. Obviously, Dogdom really, really great in the play around the in here, Brighton. This is on Elder, the wave now arriving. Kepler's going to ultimate with Baron in play as well. This should be enough to break open the mid lane inhibitor. 10 seconds on Elder. FBX can't just keep brute forcing, at least with Elder. Maybe they can just brute force manually. In fact, the top lane tower's not there anymore, so that'll be two in hips. FBX have gone from a deficit of two in hips to an advantage of two in hips. Uh, Doctor has a Zephyr. That's a thing. <laughs> Zephyr is a thing that builds out of his. We rarely get to see these things, but he's so, so strong. Kepler has the blood first, wants the wave play. Oh, oh, that's a double teleport! Kepler's gone a little bit too deep on this one. Flashes over the wall. Doctor gets off the backside. High Chow manages to survive. ZDZ goes over the wall. But Doctor might go too deep himself. Ken now has to carry a ZDZ in the middle of everything. Doctor gets away with his life. Meteor tries to carry so many Zonyas as Birdall hunts for Doctor, but the shot blast is wide. Birdall doesn't oh. have the damage. A W snipe, Baron Steel, FPX, claw their way back into the series against all odds. Fun plus Phoenix, take it back to one and one. Just a one kill advantage for FPX as the game will end. Milky Way, the one to finish it by his lonesome. As you can see, life and Meteor chasing around the other side of the map. Milky Way will finish the job and FBX keep this series alive. What a great series. Competitive frontline. I think both teams have strong frontline. It's not like one necessarily outvalues the other. I will say, if Meteor has as good swell seeds as he had in that first game, though, I think that FBX could be in for a bit of a wild ride. Nope. Milky Way trying to move his way into this bottom side now. Hawkshot used to spot out Meteor, so they know Meteor's on the way, but they also know he's not here just yet. Jin Zhao, the target, is like happy to tank the tower pillar. Flame comes in. The passive, I don't think it's quite enough. Jin Zhao will survive. It's Milky Way now. Gets to aggress onto Meteor. They may not get the actual dive itself, but the damage on Jin Zhao means there's no support from LGD in this bottom side. And Milky Way gets to try and go for Crooks instead. Jin Zhao so low on HP and the burn will finish the job. But Life now in trouble. Dashes and flashes to safety as Meteor gets stunned himself. And the Brawn passive stacking up as well. This is going to be two as Milky Way looks for the burn. A couple more autos will do the job. Meteor oh, will fall. No, Meteor survives. And now Kepler gets low, but he finishes up off Milky Way first. Doctum suddenly alone, and nobody's going down. High Chow to try and finish this kill onto Doctum as they move through the jungle. He's body blocking, he's trying to buy space and time for Jin Zhao, but he'll just finish the kill by himself. Beautifully done by LGD. How do they walk away with a winning trade? Mess of an early game fight, which I thought FX was going to run away with, but obviously I was mistaken. It was so close to being glorious for FBX, but Milky Way couldn't get his passive off. Onto, uh, I think it was Meteor that he was trying to get it on. He was like a split second away from getting that passive burning and had that kicked off. I think that might probably goes the way of FBX, but then great rope from Hai Chow, and it means that he's now 2-0, and, oh, and suddenly this Zeri matchup into Lucian doesn't feel quite as good as it did. Yeah. Fight, given how much damage you did in that first dive, that is uh, a tough pill to swap. Perhaps a cat with the nine lives, but then Kepler oh. actually is going to feel the claws on this one. Stun comes in, Trusha Barrage will be buffered, but it won't really make much difference. Doctor, I mean, we keep on seeing this Ash just chase people down. Once you're caught, there's nowhere to go. He's already on three. They might just try and smite away the first one, get themselves that four uh, grub buff for the mines. So Mizio does get that first one, as you say. Milky Way. At least one of these gets the double XP for it. As uh, that is just going to be out kind of abandoned. No, does flash away to safety. The burn ticket, but I don't think it's quite enough. And now a TP in as FBX look for their prize. It will be Birdle dropping and care grabbing a kill.
Jin Zhao is very lucky to get away with his life. FPX is in there and eat all of that damage. So FPX, they walk away with uh, that kill. They walk away with at least two of those grubs. LGD kind of got, got what they came for um, with that fourth grub, that Ash Brawn. So keep an eye on that one. We see it a lot from the so keeping tabs on that. If you get hit by either the Brawn passive or the third off. Already pretty tight here. He's taking literally negative damage from Care as Milky Way smites his Grob. Doesn't mean his blue could be under threat, but it looks like Meteor will back away from this one. Jin Zhao might not get the option of backing away from this one. Great little rotation there, and a great punishing. Now Life wants a little bit more as well. Meteor does get knocked up, gets caught, and gets stunned. That's a bonus, both into Thogdom's pocket as well. Fantastic series of plays here from FBX. Make it, and whether LGD had live or die. Lane on Steadfast Presence from third on the previous trade. As Herald started off, FBX definitely feel like the stronger team based on the previous fights we've seen so far. Jin Zhao steps up once more. TP immediately comes through from CDZ, but Jin Zhao might be gone before the fight begins. Does survive for now. CDZ gets into that front line, meets the other target. He's slowed but walks away with his life. Pyroplasm bouncing around his Birdles on the front line. Burns to a crisp and care. Dives straight onto Kepler and eviscerates him. Hi Chow and packing. And FPX will grab a Herald. This big front to back combo from FPX with a huge amount of CC in the front line. They're going to get themselves that Herald. That Herald will help them blow open this map. They still, while this is happening, get themselves um, onto a side lane turret as well. So Ken will be able to take that and get some gold for himself. LGD are not winning these team fights. They are falling behind and they can't afford to do that. The items are only going to get that much easier at killing the tanks from FBX. Have an ultimate to break up that combo. If you're going to fight for this dragon um, in a minute's time, I need to see that. I think that's probably what LGD are banking on. A good enough poppy ult to uh, break up in that combo. Either get rid of the back line or part of this front line to allow LGD into the game. That is the one X factor they have in these fights. Besides, the it is so tough for them to play this out. Maybe Maybe Meteor can get himself a big play too, but it is a hard ask. Peril actually protected here as the tower goes down for the charge, which should mean he can get a charge onto this second tower. Bird on not here, so no steadfast presence to worry about, but a solar flare might be a problem. True shot barrage eaten up by life for breakfast. And now uh, that's going to be FBX grabbing themselves a charge onto a tier two. They'll be quite happy with that one as an arrow goes in. It lands onto Meteor. He's forced to flash away, but Care won't let him out of the play. Look at the chase down from FBX. LGD cannot escape. CDZ looks for more as Doctor dives as well. Birdall tries to answer, but he falls instead as the tier two drops. And CDZ just keeps this threat going. They dock down Ultra. Birdall's ult misses. He doesn't break open that combo, and LGD do not have a way to fight back. We're at the point now where objective bounties are up and available. They just need a game and three quarters to warm up each series. That's all. <laughs> they are. They are best of three merchants. That's what they are. Jim Joe going into the Ash Swarm again, and it is just caught again. Total Flare's good. True Shot Mirage is good. Kepler has an angle here onto Milky Way, and suddenly LGD are back into things. I'll never compliment the team ever again. Oh, never mind ZDZ! Look at this! Nearly gets three for himself and saves the fight. Saves the fight, and I have to say, FBX must be very, very thankful of the fact this fight doesn't happen 30 seconds later. Not in that front to back, you can see there is still some threat from LGD, even though they've struggled to find it throughout most of this game so far. Objective bounty going to be claimed. Not that tanky just yet, and again, against that Braum. Once you're in the fight, it's really difficult to leave again. Volley comes through, ZDZ hunts. Kepler yeah, forced the arcade ship the way, and it will be mid prior for FPX. Very easy for them to grab that. They're trying to just push out mid lane, hover back into the fog of war, force LGD to come into them. LGD, you don't have fight managers right now. Uh, so, that is very good for FBX if they can make it out the front line. Oh, very powerful in the cash meteor. Arrow lands, meteor caught out here. ZDZ, can he get the all out at the right angle? Forced away and now to keep his verdict in play. ZDZ low, but he gets his all out in the end. And his Birdle to fall. FBX start the fight strong, asleep onto two. And now a chance for the LGD carries to pop off. Double swirl seed to get the slow. Hightower trying to chase, but he's hit by a pillar of flame. And ZDZ looks to answer, but Kepler has his moment in the sun. No! He's in the shade. After all, the shadow of CDC! The LTD would have taken control of this game. But he's managing to do kiss and take things. I will say Drake is spawning FPX on soul point already. It's an ocean soul as well, which is just so valuable in these long drawn-out fights. Yeah. On a flank is LGD just trying to burn the objective down. 
A spike steal would be enough from Milky Way as he moves towards the pit himself. Pillar of Flame is there. Passive up on the drake. It's not taken. No soul for FBX and LGD. Look for a fight as well. ZDZ is on the back line. His Birdle gets low. ZDZ manages to set it all up once more. He even lives through it. Dodges the swirl seed. And FBX maintain their control. They maintain dominance in this game. This means you're trying to 1v1 against Kev. And that's a Zeri. And I don't think Deers do well against Miniguns. He's gonna walk away with his life, but it is with his tail between his legs, all the same. FPX, they lose the dragon, they'll get the Baron, and they get themselves a load of kills onto LGD. It was almost the fight which LGD wanted again, but once again, stood in the way, is that Cassante from the top lane. ZDZ has had an absolute monster performance as a frontline, as a backline diving assassin from the top lane. Look like a 4,000 damage team fight, or near about in that last one. Not every player can make this champion handle like this too. Whoever's behind the wheel of that champion oh. can get a lot of value. Hijack jumps out. He's safe for now. He's slowed. Hang on, that's a prompt. Oh, no, he's Hang not. On. That's a kill for Braum. Life finds the pick up from Dogdam's arrow. And now that's a tier two broken in the top side. That's FPX with Baron Buff pushing on in hips. Yeah, so um, no, he wasn't safe for now. He goes immediately down. There's an objective bounty claimed by Birdle, but he needs to get back to base. Likelihood is two inhibitors falling. Birdle teleporting back to base to try and be there as a last bastion before FPX breaks them. No minions under the mid tower, so FPX can't just path towards that one instead. They'll just path towards the Nexus towers here, trying to threaten for more. Zeri is very fast at destroying these towers. And LGD forced back into their base, waiting for that mid-wave arrival MPX. But they're looking to take one Nexus tower, maybe more if LGD aren't careful. But with the mid-wave arriving, they'll take a mid tower on the exit, Birdall takes a Pyroclasm to the face, and that's gonna be Jinjiao falling. FBX are snowballing for a victory in 26 minutes here. It's been such a slow, delicate series, and yet FBX in game number three, they show up when it matters the most. Keep his verdict, keeps everyone in the game here. Birdall stepping up, but Meteor is so low, and FBX have the damage to finish the job to find another comeback. CDZ with a masterclass on the Cassante. The FBX players stand up as the Phoenix once again rises from the ashes. These were some of the best highlights from the Rumble stage of LPL Summer 2024 matchup between JDG and NIP. That he was a really annoying gank champion at that point, but yeah, that was the kind of era where Ezra was just, just eponymous with Pro League of Legends and really was one of the best at it. Some big damage onto Fotik, another Q lands as well, and they dive on in. Flashes from JDG's bot lane, sets up for a solo, a uh, double, a uh, duo kill? Big fight are uh, potentially on the cards. First Drake going to be coming up is a Hextech Drake, a uh, Hextech, a uh, Chemtech. Chemtech Drake. I don't know, do you know, it's been quite a long day. We've had some crazy games. My brain has apparently yeah. just turned to a puddle of mush at this point. As Yagao, his brain hasn't, and Rookie's gonna go down, no! Flashes at the last second. That flash advantage from the earlier gank saves Rookie's life. Yagao very nearly gets himself that solo kill to try and keep Rookie afloat there in the mid lane by bringing Aki over and investing Aki's flash into the mid lane. It's not paying off right now. Kanavi instead gets to go towards uh, these grubs and NIP in this early game, losing out through that bot lane, not getting a huge advantage through mid lane even with the resources put in. Rookie as well, there was no cannon there. Aki caught by the swirl seed and Kanavi has level six, the lilting lullaby lands on down and everybody dives into the mix. Aki burning on the ignite with the dot on top, missing to finish the job. And now the chase can continue. Is missing, takes a chunk from Fotik, but Ruler was ready to jump on into the mix. For Ruler, Overdwalk, Swirl Seed. If that had hit onto Fotik, could have been dangerous, but Rookie is moving down and wants to influence the map elsewhere. Missing, low on HP, one more auto gets Fotik a kill, but Ruler gets his chance to turn things around. Rookie still going strong here and has a level lead, Ruler forced away. Is Rookie going to lose anything in mid lane though? There's going to be a wave pushed in there. Can Yagao get himself a, a wave that could even things up to an extent. Rookie's still hanging around oh, Bossette. He has Ruler. a big one. That's going to be Ruler under tower. 200 HP. The Void Seeker lands and Dwarf will be able to stun this up. Ruler goes down. Rookie takes a kill there. Fotik got one in the fight as well. And NIP even this game up. Into them. 
just to make sure you don't get carried over the wall by Kasante or Woolston by Poppy or something like that. So Sheep walks away, um, doesn't have to blow that flash, does lose himself a wave towards the turret, he can't teleport up to uh, that lane. Uh, Shirakor starting over Flandre in the majority of games recently. His individual lane in Croas, one of the big reasons why JDG have been going towards this uh, younger player in the top lane. Has uh, a good level of skill even after all these years um, and a year away as well. Uh, he took a he took a little bit of break after that world's winning um, year on EDG. Yagao oh. jumping into draw. A bold trade from Yagao and flashes into the wall. Oh, you don't want to see that, do you? Yagao uh, just completely fumbles it, let's be honest. NIP now will grab those grubs, basically uncontested, missing. Wants to call me a liar. I don't really see the angle that he's looking for right now. I'm not sure that's something anyone else is going to follow up on. Rapidly closer to that mid-game point where these big neutrals will be potential targets for a fight. I'm a little bit nervous here because Shanshi has found Yak out from behind here. Perhaps a chance. Onto the Lucian, no flash available for Yagao, and the reinforcements are on their way for NIP. Shanji jumped a bit for Yagao, even with fancy footwork, can't survive a 1v3, and Aki will grab that kill. Well, ninjas in puzzles, they make a Professor Layton game out of that or something as they try and puzzle out their macro. It has often been a sticking point. Honestly, it feels like ninjas in pieces after a lot of these macro plays, but so far, so good. I feel like I feel a bit mean now that we are slating NIP so much off of the back of them actually making some positive plays being 2k up. Maybe we'll return to this one later on once they throw. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, I joke, but honestly, that has been the the way it feels for this team. Really even in this one. Minor gold lead for NIP. The Sheer, pressed upon by Rookie, but now a TP comes through from Yagao. Culling, but the minion wave blocks it. That's awkward. That is awkward. Isn't it? And the mini wave blocks the Q from Sheer as well. Oh no! The Corky and the Kaiser following up. I'm certainly excited for the prospect of big turbo fights. I'm not seeing the Is opportunity. Is that what they're called right now? Turbo oh, fights? Oh yeah, yeah. All of the cool kids are calling them turbo fights. Right. Um, oh yeah, you, you and your, your young soul as opposed exactly, to my, exactly. my, my old it's, dad. It's all, about, <laughs> it's all about the hip apparently. That's the, the bone of choice when it comes to being cool. Um, one minute until Drake comes up. Two so far for JDG and missing is just ooh, disallowed entry into the jungle. But Rookie might have overstepped for it. He's put to sleep with a lilting lullaby culling over the wall from Yagao. As the tower goes down, Fotix steps forward. Aggression from the side of NIP. They fight for river control just as the Drake is coming up. But still 35 seconds. Test for the Drake. Maybe Ruler pops out a true shot barrage. We'll go for it. Just a, a hair too early. So, Baron has spawned. JDG do get themselves some topside vision control. NIP don't have that much in that arm. JDG, they still have that flash. Ruler's caught out in mid lane, but he'll eat to safety. Takes off his HP before that, though. Will still survive and just blast it underneath this tower here. I think Fota can finish the job, so a tier two taken by NIP. Nice little punish from them. After I've been criticizing their mid game macro, they grab themselves a Drake, they grab themselves a tier two in the mid lane as well. Very nice little sequence been less consistent with this Corky now at the two item spike. Need to see if he can get himself onto the board in a meaningful way. He did that in the bot lane earlier on into the game. I think that you need to do that another one or two times to maybe open up a Baron opportunity and then I think NIP will be all rolling. So JDG on the other side of that need to be prepared for that. Don't go too close to the, the dark and dangerous fog of war. There might be a rookie in there. So things are really slowing down. Now for those of you who are more familiar with JDG of previous years, as Juan might look for the ult, was cancelled that. Shanji coming in with the ghost. Captain Jack Clemens from Ruler there, forced the flash into the wolf pit, and this is an all out engage coming out from NIP, but it's a trade. One for one, both supports down. Kanavi oh. finds the triple sleep, and here comes the follow up from JDG. He turns golden, buys himself time. Sheer has entered the play, but he's only a mini now. Shanji gets onto the backside as Sheer stacking that rage bar. Doesn't even need it. That's the killer. Shanji on the backside finds two, evens things up. But Sheer looks for his opposite man. A rock hits, but a TP out to safety from Shanji. So I'd say, and immediately just get battered. Like we saw. Saw it earlier with Kepler going forwards in the previous series. Now we see Ruler do it too. It happens to the very best of them. Kisante is never low on HP. Always remember that. Once again, 
vied for control of the river around this drake that's just spawning. This would be two in a row for them as they group Ooh. up in the brush. That's good damage onto Missing. The brand passive crocking. The shield comes through from Missing. Solar Flare flashed away from. And Missing will survive. Sheer, in the meantime, looking for a flank on the bottom side, but spotted on a ward halfway on the rage bar. Aki hits a three-man W, and that gives NIP the setup advantage for the Dragon. Sheer is still going to be here. We'll see whether JDG commit any harder to this. Kanavi could potentially look for a smite fight. Sheer's getting close to Mega. True Shot Mirage goes in. Kanavi is in the pit looking for the Drake, and NIP have been pushed away. Kanavi they leave is it. just going to finish the Drake. JDG don't even need to fight if they don't want to. At this point, the objective has been secured. Now looking potentially for a re-engager, NIP is... Megan R starting to time out, but JDG, they're backed away. And, ...and stuff like that, so Confodic will have to see whether he can get himself into that kind of brawly, low-range Kaiser yeah. kind of status. They start up that Baron. JDG, they're the ones which will be forced Ooh. to answer. That's cleanse out from Ruler. TP immediately comes through as Kanavi looks to get into the mix. Jwoll will be chunked and finished off by the Baron in the end. As NIP, we were waiting for a mistake. Towards that one, they push in the mid lane fast as possible, and NIP, they don't have their engage now. There's no real way to close down the carries. JDG looking to siege. Ruler's just throwing out so much damage on the Ezreal now. Three items finished off, and with a Bloodthirster, he's happy to take a tower shot or two. Oh, happy to go maybe towards top side and force NIP out of that bot side river because they're afraid of Baron going over. So JDG with a real chance here to find a fight that could turn the game as Ruler gets away from Draw. Solar Flare is there, but nobody's available to follow up. Shanji, though, finds the all-out! What a play from the Kasante in the top side! NIP find their moment, and Shanji hand delivers it as Fotik wants his moment in the spotlight as well, finds the kill onto Yagao, and NIP will break this base wide open. Draw falls to Sheer as he finds a double kill on the other side, and that should keep JDG in the game. I think Sheer ends up uh, saving the game, doing a bit of a Marin, uh, killing the wave in mid lane to make sure the game doesn't end. But this time, the follow-up was there from NIP, and the difference is very, very large. NIP get themselves a couple of crucial kills, and they're going to head towards this dragon to potentially deny JDG soul. Sheer is here, and he does have Mega, and he does have Flash. What can he do, though? 1v3, Nari, not exactly a, a damage carry. Kanavi didn't immediately go on, so that Baron's going to be a little bit slower. Still might be fast enough. It's gone. 3k. There's the smite. Dwol going to try and punish. Missing. Looks to get over the wall with the crash down. And there we go, JDG. It's an absolute heist. They lose them in inhib, but they take a Baron through sheer tempo. 20 would be sold for JDG. Um, this is, if we're looking towards the JDG, going back towards that late game team fighting style, this is the time to prove it. Again, you have yourself... Um, this Lilia, huge point of power. Sheer potentially looking for a flank as well. Dragon spawning. Sheer spotted on a ward, but and use that ward to continue stacking rage. This is perfect for Sheer. He's about to turn mega just as Drake comes up. JDG are on soul point, and Kanavi knows it. Starts the Drake up immediately. Sheer has found Shanji off on this side. He's zoning, and Aki is nowhere near the plate. Ooh. This is soul taken. Missing just keeps them away. Sheer now gets an engage onto Shanji. Soul flag comes down as Draw barely survives the play. In goes the Cassante. He's in 1v4, though. I don't know if he's got the damage. Ruler survived on the top side of the play. He does manage to get one because he is a Cassante. At the end of the day, Ruler goes down as well. Fotek finding one for himself. Missing now. Jumps back onto the other side of the play. The soul just isn't enough for the side of JDG. Or is it? Kanavi looks for a little bit more. Flashes into the play. And Sheer is there to sweep up the kills. Aki goes down. Fotek burning. Missing. Stones him. A boomerang as a quadra kill comes through for Kanavi. 6,700 damage and even more to give. Kanavi gets the soul, gets the team fight. And JDG, they were waiting for that late game team fight. This team has so historically looked for. It could just be that. It could just be over 38 minutes in. JDG walking towards the enemy Nexus. It'll be at least be an inhibitor. I think it's going to be the game. Absolutely miraculous fight for JDG. It looked like it was over. I was talking about Ruler's Ezreal. His Ezreal was nothing to do with these fights. It was all Kanabi, all Sheer, all Missing. Managing to find their combos. This top side pair from JDG. Phenomenal stuff. As in the late game, it all comes on through. And JDG start the series 1-0.
is behind the enemy tower. Missing is going to be the first one in to try and set up the play. Flash from Botic dodges away from the Rogger, but that's a first blood in split seconds. Whoa, just eradicated. And perhaps a redive as well. Can be happy to tank the tower for a second as Missing sets up for Ruler to grab a second? Clean dive from JDG. Kanavi gets his clear speed of that ultra fast Zyra down towards the bot lane. Moving speed, but even then, you can get kited. It's not, might not even be relevant. If bot lane is going to be this far behind and getting dove again, it might not even be relevant. And that's the sad thing. They're going again. There's no flashes. It is so easy. Oh, Photic is doomed. And it's another for Ruler as the TP is going to be cancelled from Shanji as well, which means 12. Might just get redived. Missing can happily tank the tower up, and Rule has got plenty of damage to finish these off. Kanavi gets one of his own. Missing will go down, but what does it matter when this many minions are dying to the tower? The top side um, could have done from NIP. I suppose the one criticism you got to have is why was there no one to defend that bot side dive if it was so easy? They failed to defend themselves under that turret. Aki's trying to get towards Grubs, and now the pressure from bot side might be flooding towards top lane. Missing is having none of it today. Every time he sees a player from NIP, he's going in. But the damage is not quite there just yet. Yagao moving over Shin, trying to get into the plate as well. The groups did go down to JDG, I believe, in the end. As now we're going forwards into the fight. Shin pulls Aki over the wall. Chua is going to go down as well. Yagao solo. Shanji trying to chase for a kill. But Kanabi gets the damage down. Shanji doesn't oh no. have a flash. Ults over the wall. Looks for the E. Looks for the E. And he finds Yagao. Shanji now has to try and get out of dodge. This is going to be a challenge. Shin flashes over the wall to make sure he's tagged. No execute coming through for Shanji. It will be another kill for JDG. Sheer takes this one, and JDG take that lead from the bot side of the map. A much, a much more active early game from them than game one. So confident, so comfortable forcing these plays. Yagao dodges everything. Has to flash, though, and the Lilting Lullaby should be enough. It was some nice footwork, but in the 2v1, he's taken down. A kill for Rookie. So crucial for NIP that Rookie is on the board. And are we going to recall mm. not choosing to what? go for the objective? Grubs are up in 20 seconds, maybe they want to contest their own dives. If that IP do get themselves that, maybe they can get themselves some luck. Shanji looking forward to getting damage on the tower. He's going to get oh. all out, though. Shanji pulled underneath the tower. Shears looking for a solo kill in the top side. Shanji brings out his pocket pick, and he wins the 1v1. Shears started it off, but Shanji takes him down. Off the board, but at least Shanji gets himself a lead. Three and one gifted two kills from... Um, the earlier Grubs fight, can he continue with that into a game-changing advantage? It is going to be a hell of an uphill battle given the elites. Half a draw's health and quarter of Aki's health as well. Just from a couple of plants thrown into a brush there. This will be the first Drake of the game. We're almost 13 minutes in. And this will be Drake number one for JDG. Looks like NIP are considering contesting this. Shanti was moving over, but no. It's not going to go through in the end. I'll be JDG taking their first Drake and continuing to build some minor advantages. And um, JDG, they by going back to those routes, they've allowed to activate some of their late game potential. I think that Kanavi has been really flourishing in the meta so far. Rune is walking up, might be contesting this all the same. He is very, very powerful. Votix in trouble, Ruler was just chasing him. The Satchel Charge used Dragos wide on the Zenith Blade. Missing, happy to tank up for the time being as Yagao threatens in the top side. Sheer is on a flank. Juo should go down. The Shanji tries to peel, tries to get onto Missing himself. Yagao getting damaged down onto the Dragon as Rookie on the bottom side threatening. Ruler chasing Fotik this whole time as Sheer brings down the Dragon. Ruler versus Fotik. ADC 1v1 and the bombs come out. Trumps Fotik walks away with a kill. Champion, and especially when you got a player like Sheer piloting it. It, it feels more OP, you know? <laughs> I feel like there are certain yeah. players that manage to just squeeze more out of the champion. Another player is Shanji. We saw that in the previous game, how much he was getting done on the Cassante. Sheer moving into Arrow's the top side up. again. Rookie, just a hair away from that arrow. Volley's coming on through. Herald still the target is missing. Gets his Celestial off position. He's a lot tankier than he has been. He's already been pretty tanky. Dwo trying to get in as Rookie looks for a knockup. Missing, finds Fotik on the backline. Smite onto the Herald, comes on through. The plants are going to do some damage, but Missing found by Janji. Dwo tanking up on the front line as Aki moves over. That's Sheer caught by Rookie's ultimate as well. They don't get the Herald, but a couple of kills is nice for NIP. 
Ren IP. Ren IP, they are currently losing uh, position on Dragon and that top lane turret. They get themselves in towards that river, stack up that Lilia Q a little bit more. That's the Solar Flare. Well, was pretty chunked at this point. Dragon started. Photic has to flash away from the arrow. Shanji has a great flank, though. What an angle from Shanji. And Rookie is ready to dive in alongside him. Rookie just takes a huge jump. Where's Shanji? Finally jumps over, but Rookie's already gone. Roller just kites the dragon out. Shanji needed to go sooner. It's a disaster for NIP. It looked like it was going to be everything. But the discoordination just makes it fall apart. Shanji now being chased out by Kanavi. The dots ticking, missing, finds the knockup. The roots are there, and Kanavi will grab another. No, Aftershock grabs it for missing. <laughs> missing gets himself a kill. That I think deservedly so. Missing's out a super solid game. Votic teleported away from the fight into mid lane to try and save it. I don't even know if he'll be able to do that. Demolish comes through. Even Votic teleporting towards the lane will not save NIP from the worst. And matchup for sure. JDG still very much in control right now as Rookie now starts the fight against Sheer, finds the ultimate for the Ooh. all out, pulls him back through, and Ruler's got the damage to finish the job. Now Shanji trying to be reinforcements, but he needs reinforcements himself. Missing is going to chase him down. It's a dragon versus a horse. Which one is faster? It looks like the horse wins it out, and the Q3 keeps Yagao safe as Shanji will be slain. Kanavi went down elsewhere in the map, though. That could be bad for JDG. Yeah, NIP end up cross mapping, but what's it realistically going to lead to? NIP, they can't start that Baron because I believe Kanavi managed to get some turnaround damage onto Aki. That's probably why he's below half HP. You know, JDG, they're going to walk towards this bot side. They have themselves the might buff with four grubs taken earlier in the game. And the solo laders from JDG outvalue the solo laders from NIP. The fate seal from Yoda is going to seal the enemy's fate, not your own. A lot of gold. They are still worried about the next Ash Arrow. They're teleporting oh. in. This is going to be Rookie. Rookie's what behind. can we do here? Missing is pretty chunked already. And Yagao has a shutdown on him. Flashes the solar flare. Missing, staying in the play. How tanky is this horse? The shit gets into the mix as well. Photic arriving, throws some bombs, but Missing's walked away. He's kept himself alive. And NIP committed a TP for this one. I don't think they'll get much more because JDG can just peel away and even move towards that Drake. Yeah, Sheer ends up teleporting as well, so at least it's a trade of Global for Global. And of course, NIP have uh, the extra teleport on the Ziggs if they want to move someone quickly around the map. But NIP struggling to find the fight. Um, they get themselves that one pick in mid lane, but it has felt like every single larger engagement has gone the way of JDG. They're going to get themselves a Dragon off of this two NIP, no response anywhere. And Despite the fact that Rookie had himself a good amount of gold given into him and Shanji, similar scenario, they are now behind in their individual matchups. Uh, and that's as good as it gets. Rookie's going again, and now they're teleporting in with the Zilts. Maybe Sheer can be found. Photic arrives. There's a good amount of MR on Sheer. All out available for him as Kanavi's moving up. Sheer is damn tanky. Okay, the bomb should be enough. There's one final auto to finish the job. A pick for NIP. Baron up on the map. Maybe a chance to turn this game in their favor. JDG have been in control the entire game. This is NIP's chance to change that fact. Get himself a good team fight with that flash. He will very much get himself to kill participation to get himself to be in that avid reading club again. Kanavi thought he'd written it in pen, but NIP got one of those special pen rubbers that rubs that out anyway. <laughs> trying to move forwards here. Chunked a little bit. It's JDG. A bit of an awkward spot. They are on the wrong side of the play here. Yaga on a flank, but Shanji. Lucian flanks not exactly that exceptional in the history of the game. Draw just slowly getting chunked, and it doesn't feel like NIP really are confident enough to start a fight. Yeah, NIP get themselves inside track on mid, but they have one minion, so they don't even get anything on that good route. Missing, and this is an arrow oh, from Ruler. Arrow on Aki, the big damage coming on through. Aki turns golden, but his team has abandoned him. Yaga on the Lucian flank finds the kill. He's ulted by Rookie, but Rookie might answer with his own life here. Shanji trying to close the gap. Ruler flushes and takes Rookie down. Space glide into victory as a triple comes through for Ruler, and Sheer gets a bonus. It's an ace for Jay. DG. The summoner's rip just became ruler's throne room for a brief moment. Triple kill to the Ash. Seven, one and seven. Starts with the arrow onto the jungler. Aki goes down, spaces out the rest of the fight, and ruler runs the game. Just gets chased no. down and finished off poor old Fotig. And I mean, this has been a tough series for NIP, hasn't it? They've done better in this second game to stay competitive, but it does just feel like at the end, struggling a bit. He's had a pretty fantastic series. Kanavi, a bit off sheer. I mean, has 
come out of nowhere as this talent that JDG picked up. And my God, does he look good now. He's getting more carry games. His Cassante games look fantastic. It feels like JDG yeah. are really starting to all come together as a team. I think Shears is so much more well-rounded than he was when even he debuted earlier this year too. He's beginning to believe, he's beginning to learn uh, all of those Kung Fu fighting styles being downloaded into his net brain a la The Matrix as JDG looked to kick NIP one last time out of this game. Is that an Italian dish a la The Matrix? I don't know. It sounds kind of tasty. <laughs> um, I'd certainly download that one. As I don't, one thing I won't download, a car, which is what JDG are trying to throw at the base of NIP right now. Two inhibs taken, Rookie trying to trade for an inhib of his own. JDG not interested in recalling, they want to try and end the game. They force the TP out from Rookie to make sure that JDG can't end. The damage they have is going to be a task and a half. Gorilla takes this one down. That's that one to his quarry of kills. He's taken in this game, so many of them. Double his stacks on the Magi's to six. This is unprecedented amounts of stacks. Unprecedented, incredible. As Yagao, mid lane, managing to get some damage done onto Foti. I guess from the mid lane rather than in it. Sheer tanking on the front line and is totally and completely invincible. Third in hit goes down for JDG. And this feels like they are just slowly but surely bleeding NIP out of the game. The supers come down in the mid lane. This is the only wave that they've got to work with. With the Ziggs on the enemy team, perhaps the wave player will be there. Kanavi's stopped by a solar flare, but he's a plant. He likes oh. the sun. And Shanti forced away, missing with a four-man Magnus Storm. And JD Gaming show us why they are considered a top team. They show us why they are in Group Ascend, and they send NIP maybe back down to Group Nirvana at this rate. Zero and five in the group. These were some of the best highlights from the Rumble stage of LPL Summer 2024 matchup between JDG and NIP. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.